Hey all you weirdos, Jim here, and while DC has jumped fully into night terrors and their summerween festivities, thankfully we're still going to get some non-spooky books for all the kids down at the local bocce ball court who just aren't into that horror thing. I'm sure they were all excited when they found out that Hawkgirl was coming out. I mean, who couldn't be when writer Jadzia Axelrod told everyone on Twitter that it would be the greatest comic book run of all time? Unfortunately, Axelrod blocked me. So I decided maybe I just wouldn't take their word for it and would actually read and review the issue myself. Crazy, huh? So is Hawkgirl number one the beginning of the greatest comic run of all time? I'm kind of still trying to figure out if it's actually a Hawkgirl comic. So let's get into this. You are all weirdos. Weird science is the revolution. Weird science. The revolution. Now, before I read the credits, I want to give a quick shout out to my friends Mark and Remzo at the Second Print Comics YouTube channel. The only reason my channel here continues to grow is because of some really, really great people who continue to help me out. And so I wanted to pay it forward a bit and help as many other people as I can. And I have been friends with Mark and Remzo for quite some time, and I love everything that they do on their YouTube channel, the Second Print Comics YouTube channel. And plus, I know all you weirdos will dig it because I do. I'm going to put a link to their channel in the description. And please, if you are watching these videos and you have a channel yourself, don't be shy. Let me know and I'll get some shout outs out for you as well. But here we go. Hawk Girl number one, written by Jadzia Axelrod with art by Amin K. Nuhalpan. I'll start off by telling you that I'm not a huge Hawk Girl fan. It's not that I hate her. I just don't know enough about the character to care that much. Sure, she has been on the Justice League recently since the Scott Snyder medal days. But even then, to me, she often felt more like a prop than an actual character. I'm sure there are fans out there who really like the Hawk Girl Martian Manhunter love affair. To me, I don't know. It felt kind of weird and creepy at points. So when it was mentioned here that that ended, I really wasn't shedding any tears. So... I didn't have real high expectations going into this first issue. The only thing I really wanted was to like Kendra by the last page. And by the end, I think I might have set the bar too high. It's obvious from the start that Axelrod is way more interested in writing their own characters like Galaxy than Hawkgirl. And while I've seen this sort of thing so many times before, I don't know. This one takes it to another level. If you didn't know, Galaxy is a character that Axelrod created for their young adult book, Galaxy, The Prettiest Star. But don't worry if you didn't read that. Everyone in this book will let you know how great Galaxy is. So while Kendra is written like an angry sad sack that nobody would want to be around, Galaxy shows up and glows up, as the kids say, to save Hawkgirl and everyone else. She even has a cute talking dog. I mean, it's not even fair. Later, after an awkward meetup with an old college friend that is sure to come back as this miniseries goes, Kendra calls up Batman, who, after acting like a total dick, tells Kendra how great Galaxy is. While all this is going on, Axelrod does introduce the villain of the story, Vulpecula, who is very interested in the nth metal, which is no surprise, and will use and abuse anyone including another new character who will surely get more page time than Kendra by the time this miniseries ends. Now, with all of that, my main problem with this issue is just the idea that I didn't really like Kendra. She came off as just kind of a jerk, kind of somebody with a chip on their shoulder. And while that would be okay, there's more time spent showing how fun and great Galaxy is which then just makes Kendra that much worse. And I worry as we go through here, this is going to be more of a galaxy book than a hawk girl book. And you could actually sit there and think, well, okay, they want to have a galaxy book, but you need something bigger to sell, especially in Dawn of DC. So why not just throw that into a hawk girl book, kind of dupe people into getting something that they may not have wanted or expected And while I never thought that this was going to be the greatest comic run ever, I was actually at least hoping to enjoy this first issue. I was more confused by the end than actually angry or anything, but 
Maybe it's just me, but when a book is called Hawkgirl, I expect a bit more Hawkgirl. And I hope that she's written in a slightly likable way. Maybe I'm just weird like that. But while Amin K. Noapwan's art is really good, better than my pronunciation of their name, this book is not very good. It's just the first issue, though, so things can certainly get better. But right here, right now, as Jesus Jones once sang, I'm going to give this a 5 out of 10, and that's mostly for the art. And I will say the villain is slightly intriguing, but that's the bad thing. Everybody in this book is more interesting than the lead character. You end up having Hawkgirl on the marquee. Please at least make her interesting, and I didn't get that from this. So let me know what you think about Hawkgirl, number one, in the comments below. And please make sure you do check out the Second Print Comics YouTube channel. Go and look in the description for the link to them. And that's it. And I will talk to you all later. You are all weirdos. Weird science is the revolution. Weird science is the revolution.